Welcome back to the Unknown Experience. Thanks for joining me. Today we're taking a look at the Inspiration4 mission that's due to take off on the 15th of September in about five days time. This will be the world's first all civilian mission to orbit. They will take off from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida with a two-stage Falcon rocket. Now you might ask yourself um, why would anyone want to send civilians into space? There's more behind this mission than just making a statement. By launching these four civilians into orbit, SpaceX aims to prove that space is no longer the realm of astronauts with extreme training. We're on the doorstep of potentially the biggest revolution in terms of space flight, where reusability has increased our ability to access space the Falcon rocket being used has been used multiple times. The Dragon capsule that goes on top of this Falcon rocket has been used before to get astronauts to the ISS and successfully splashed down in the Gulf of Mexico in May. It has since been refitted with a glass dome for a better viewing opportunity for these four astronauts. This modified Dragon craft will stay in orbit around the Earth for about three days and will return on the 18th of September, splashing down in the Atlantic Ocean. It's going to be at an altitude of more than 500 kilometers, so its orbit's going to be much further out than the International Space Station. Now to get to the crew of this craft and this mission, there's a very good documentary series currently airing on Netflix that I would suggest that you check out inspiration for on Netflix. Do yourself a favor and check this documentary series out. It's worth the watch. I've already completed the first two episodes and it's really something to inspire like the name suggests. The man funding this mission is Jared Isaacman, 38 year old CEO of Shift4 Payments. Now you might think these people have no experience in terms of space flight. That might be true but take into consideration. Jared's got many flight hours as he's a qualified pilot and he's actually flown a number of jets and all these civilians that were selected went through quite a bit of training to get them ready for this specific mission. Jared's not only the commander of this mission but he is the main funder of this endeavor. There's four words that goes along with each of these astronauts and the word that goes along with Jared is leadership. He is after all the CEO of a company that he started from scratch that's worth billions of dollars by now. The inspiration behind our second passenger is hope. Haley was a young girl when she was diagnosed with bone cancer. She was admitted to St. Jude's Children's Hospital and underwent treatment there where she beat the disease. Today Haley is a physician's assistant at St. Jude's Hospital, where she works with children that was diagnosed with cancer. Ali is also the Chief Medical Officer on board for this flight. Next up is Siam. Siam signifies prosperity. She grew up on the island of Guam, where her father worked at a NASA station, where he relayed signals for the Apollo missions. Siam is also a professor of geology and was a lifelong dream for her to go to space. She will serve as the pilot on this particular mission. Christopher is the last passenger on the list. He signifies generosity. He was selected for a fundraising exercise which was aimed to collect up to $200 million for the St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Christopher is also a data engineer at Lockheed Martin and has a passion for space. He's also a veteran and he used to serve in the US Air Force. Although they are all excited, they have relatives and needless to say, there's always some amount of worry in terms of a loved one climbing onto a rocket that's potentially a large bomb. The Dragon craft that they are using has been used before and it's a proven system that's not failed as of yet. And if this mission is successful, it will prove that we are entering a new age in terms of space travel. 
we're not just the top qualified individuals with the highest grades and best physical form are allowed to go into space. So the mission is scheduled to take off on the 15th of September from the Kennedy Space Center and after orbiting the Earth for about three days at about 590 kilometers, they will re-enter Earth's atmosphere and splash down in the Atlantic Ocean. So that's the plan or how it's supposed to go. If you're not excited by space and the space race and what's and what developments are taking place currently i would urge you to take a look at the documentary that's being aired on netflix i would urge you to take a look at this documentary because it, um, it explains why and how it's happening and the time frame around this and it also takes a look at the private lives of these individuals that were selected before i say goodbye just a short update in terms of starbase there's still a lot of work going on at the Starbase and at the moment the booster number 4 has been put back onto the launch pad. Although I suspect it will, might be removed again from the launch pad as there's no skirting on the engines at this stage and I suspect there's still some work to be done. I think this has been stacked just to check the infrastructure and ensure and make sure everything fits into place as it should. It will be quite some time before they are ready to launch in my opinion. I'm not sure if it will happen this year, we can all hope it will, but like I've previously said, there's lots of approvals that still need to go through and if the Starbase infrastructure is not completed, this will not be approved. So there's a lot of work still to be done and work on the next Starship and booster is already underway. As per always, please give me a like share and subscribe keep well and don't panic